Hi, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. This is Uncivilized Politics Part 2. I just wanted to follow up on another video we did. We had a lot of, um, a lot of feedback on that, especially uh, locally, where I talked about the forced framework that you've been given as a uh, civilization where it's left versus right, at least in, a, in America. Uh, politics where it's just sort of a teeter-totter of uh, competing ideologies or uh, outlooks and the, the fortune of these two camps when it's really a circle where you're talking about collectivists versus uh, individualism right it's really like that because um, an uncivilized vitality by the way is unquestionably at the base of this where it's all about uh, individualism that doesn't mean that you're uh, not a part of a functioning human society. It's quite the opposite, actually. So I want to follow up and talk about this and the fact that nature is arranged in hierarchies. And uh, there's lots of examples of this, right? Uh, the food chain being the biggest one, so-called food chain, right? Where the, the little fish eats the smaller fish and then the bigger fish eats that fish and then an even larger fish eats that fish. And then hopefully I eat that fish at the end. But human society, human beings do not work like that. Within the hierarchy of nature, and there are certain hierarchies you have to uh, um, follow, laws of physics and such, where you have to follow those. But human uh, social interactions are done in social circles or um, webs or networks. Like, um, I was going to say something about a network, that, uh, that fungus network that lives underneath the forest floor and the trees, but I'm not going to get too far afield, try to keep it short social networks. So it's less that you are at the top of a, a um, hierarchy. That's another forced frame you've been given by a society or, or sorry, by a civilization. When in social situations, you actually work in circles. There are no such things as uh, upper or lower classes of people, right? That's a, that's an artificial forced frame. There are no alphas and betas. There are no alphas and omegas or, um, um, lower and higher that's just a that verticality is a, a false idea a false way to think about how human beings interact with each other we actually work in uh, circles right so this person has a circle that is mostly composed of this person uh, as him or her as an individual and then if you join the social circle of another human being now you've formed a social circle that typically runs outside of the individual that we would call this uh, the family. That family social circle or network, because these aren't always perfectly circular, right? That may include another pair of uh, small individuals, let's say. Uh, let's say this couple was prolific and they had three smaller individuals. Then these individuals eventually, now they belong to their own circle, they will belong to uh, other circles on their own eventually. But from here, let's say this individual, uh, she belongs to a uh, bowling uh, team or some other social network. Maybe she uh, goes and does CrossFit. So now she belongs to her CrossFit social circle. All right, at the gym, that's her community, right? It doesn't mean that she doesn't... Um, She's not better or less than anybody at the social circle that is the CrossFit. She's just a member of that gym. Let's say she works at uh, a university. She's in a social circle where the president uh, or chancellor of that university, how does somebody draw a little chancellor's cap, I guess like that, little mortar, right? They may be at the center of that social circle and she may be a, um, a faculty member, not quite a full or uh, professor, maybe associate professor, maybe just a, um, a lecturer or something. So she's at the periphery of that circle. And then you see how all these social circles will start to uh, intersect and overlap, kind of like in math, you get those Venn diagrams, which are super uh, interesting. Let's not get distracted. The um, social circles of all these individuals, because he would have a community, he would have his own communities, she would have her own communities, they also still belong in all these other circles, and you're actually going to just be networking, uh, not necessarily higher or lower. Everybody, all human beings are uh, created equal, and you just belong to different social, overlapping social circles, that, which forms a network or a web of social interaction. 
Now, depending on the social circle, you may not be at the center of that circle, but not all, because some circles have to, there has to be a, a so-called uh, chain of command or a, uh, uh, an infrastructure maybe to make it work properly. And in the, let's say in the military, they're going to structure that in uh, closer to um, a larger picture of nature where they may have a hierarchy in, in the sense that the, uh, the generals up here and the privates are down here. Another way to think about that would be the, the, the privates are on the, the periphery or in the center, and then as you move up in successive ranks, that encompasses the, um, the ranks below that. I think it's an easier way to think of. Uh, I studied, I've studied martial arts uh, almost my entire life, and you start out as a white belt, and then the thinking was you'd move your way up to black belt. That's how we were taught to think about it. That's how I thought about it. Then you'd move your way up to uh, expert level or uh, master level. Right? We worked our way up, and as you worked your way up, there were more ranks below you. We would talk about rank and file, which is another way to say, right, is um, these are the files, right, and these are the ranks. Another way to think about that is rows and columns, and that does form a hierarchy of sorts, if you think about it that way, moving your way up the ranks. But you notice when the rank and file is all intersected, it forms a, a net, a network, a social network. So a good way to think about that, or a better way to think about that, is when I started out as a white belt, right, that says white belt, hopefully the camera's close, you can read that, uh, I didn't know uh, anything. I didn't know that I didn't know anything, that's how bad white belt is. And then I got uh, another belt rank, let's call it uh, blue, and then I would earn a little bit more information. I would encompass more information. I'd work my way up to say a purple. I'll use jujitsu um, standard colors. Then I'd work my way out to a brown belt. And then eventually I'd work my way out to black belt. And black belt in this case is not necessarily higher ranked like in a food chain in nature, right? This would be more, I've just moved out toward the periphery of this particular, of this particular social network or this um, um, information um, set. And I've worked my way toward the periphery as I've, as I've encompassed more and more of that. Your human being, um, social interactions work the same way. You are part of more and more as you grow older or as you uh, become more socialized or less socialized. You isolate yourself, you're, you're contracting, expanding your individual social circles and they're going to interact with other people's social circles. You may find that you don't like running in certain social circles, so you will draw yourself from that circle. You can be selective about your circles. The thing to remember is it's not a hierarchy from up to down. That's the civilized way of thinking. The natural human way of thinking is to conceptualize your relationship with others in, in intersecting social networks. You're not necessarily at the periphery or center of every social network. That's not a good or a bad thing. Um, there are organized circles because in order to accomplish things, sometimes you have to have certain organizations that will appear as if they're hierarchies, but they're really just overlapping social circles. Just like we talked about in the previous video where they took this normal social circle and they had opened it up boom, with a false center, and at one end you've got the right, and they would talk about, oh, don't be too far right, you're going to be a fascist, or if you go too far to the left, you'll end up as a communist, All right? I, I, they're actually the same thing. You're just working around this circle uh, in this fashion, kind of on the periphery all the way up. So as that was a forced dichotomy, the idea of thinking about upper and lower classes or higher and lower ranked in, in a vertical sense is false. You are more uh, in a horizontal sense. You can be closer or further away from the periphery. Social networks work like that. Remember that civilization ultimately is the sophistry and illusion of psychopaths. And uh, I'm going to unpack that idea a little bit more in an Uncivilized Politics Part 3 video. That's just going to be for members only. Um, and I'm going to do that next. And then you, if you're a member, contact Caitlin. She'll get the link shared around to you so you can see that and I can uh, talk a little more freely about some of it. If you like this concept of redefining or reframing the way you view your relationships with other people uh, as social networks as opposed to the larger hierarchy of nature, right? 
nature exists in hierarchies, that is true. But within that, human beings exist in social circles. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're trying to relate to other people and figure out a way to get along with other people in society. Like, share, subscribe, leave some comments below, and uh, we'll see what you think about that.